Have you ever wondered what World War III might look like? Well, newsflash, it's about to look a whole lot different than what we expect. Forget missiles and tanks. I mean, sure, that'll be there, but the real battlefield is much less flashy. And CNN is going to be pissed that they can't send reporters to the war zone so they can wear those little green helmets and show off explosions. We want to roll the video uh, right before he was supposed to go on the air. Oh, I'd say... <laughs> No, this war has already started in the shadows over resources, over commodities, and it's hitting much closer to home in a big way right now. We'll get there in a minute, but first, NATO, led by the United States and Britain, are preparing for direct war with Russia, and some NATO members don't want to have anything to do with it. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban this weekend, a NATO member who knows exactly what NATO is up to. A hot war is coming, and he doesn't want his men being killed in a fool's errand. According to the Prime Minister, he says there are alarming similarities right now between what is being said and prepared right before the start of World War I and World War II, and he wants out of it. For a NATO Prime Minister to say this, this is a huge deal, guys. Orban says NATO was created with the purpose of defending member states against aggressors, not waging wars outside of its territory. So what are these worrying developments this weekend? Well, according to the New York Times, it's this. Antony Blinken wants Ukraine to use long-range U.S. weapons to attack deep inside of Russia. Direct war. I wonder where Blinken got that idea. Could it be from Satan herself, Victoria Nuland, this week, who essentially demanded that the U.S. help Ukraine attack Russia? They need to be able to stop these Russian attacks that are coming from bases inside Russia. So I think there's also a question of whether we, the United States, and our allies ought to give them more help in hitting Russian bases, which heretofore we've not been willing to do. Oh, we're just getting started, because among the other bombshell nuggets in this report, the Biden administration is now actively discussing putting boots on the ground in Ukraine to train Ukrainian soldiers. Quote, the United States is now considering training Ukrainian troops inside the country rather than sending them to training grounds in Germany. That would require putting American personnel in Ukraine, something that Mr. Biden has prohibited until now. Yeah, he's breaking a lot of his promises. Long-range weapons, boots on the ground. The New York Times also exposed how Britain is already doing it. No debate. In the suicidal country of Britain, they're already doing it. Quote, Britain, usually in lockstep with Washington on war strategy, has quietly lifted its own restrictions so that its storm shadow cruise systems can be used to target Russia more broadly. Yes, deep inside of Russia. Britain has lost its mind. They want war with Russia so badly they can taste it. This week, they invited Ukrainian neo-Nazi Azov battalion members to UK's parliament to give them a standing ovation. Didn't they learn from Canada when they invited a Nazi to take part in a celebration and give him a standing ovation? But no, Britain didn't. In fact, Boris Johnson was even on hand to take some photos with the neo-Nazis. Here he is holding an Azov banner featuring the Wolf's Angle symbol, which was, of course, once used by the Nazi Waffen SS division in World War II. That's unbelievable. This is a world gone mad right now. This is absolute madness. And Senator Ted Cruz laid right into Blinken this week on dragging us into World War III. Mr. Secretary, you have presided over the worst foreign policy disaster of modern times. When Joe Biden became president, he inherited peace and prosperity in the world. We now have two simultaneous wars waging, the worst war in Europe since World War II and the worst war in the Middle East in 50 years. Both, I believe, were caused by this administration's consistent weakness. And indeed, your foreign policy is precisely backwards from what a rational American foreign policy should be. But as I said at the beginning, this war is going to play out much differently than anyone is talking about because this war is unwinnable. That's why when Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin was asked what winning in Ukraine looks like, he couldn't answer because he's not allowed to admit the truth. So what does victory look like for Ukraine? Yeah. How do you define victory? Um, we've said from the very beginning that what we want to see is a Ukraine that's, uh, that's a, a democratic country that, has, uh, that, that, that is uh, independent uh, and, uh, and... And overnight we learned that all of those United States weapons that we've been sending to Ukraine now have about a 10% accuracy. This is an unbelievable piece of news that we just got this weekend. I mean, all of those weapons, because of Russian jamming, 
are totally ineffective and they're basically falling to the ground. So you, the taxpayers, are footing the bill for tens of billions of dollars of worthless weapons. The truth, of course, is that this is not about Russia. It's about resources. It's about commodities. It's about deglobalization and the move away from a failing U.S. dollar right now. We just got this chart this weekend, which shows the move away from the U.S. dollar is moving faster than ever. Look at these numbers. They don't lie. China dumping U.S. dollars like never before. Countries now settling transactions in Chinese currency instead of U.S. dollars. This, of course, could be why the U.K., knowing war is coming, is telling its citizens right now to stock up on food and water right now before the full war starts. Why would they be telling their citizens that? You have to question it, right? As a result of the war, we've seen the largest spike in energy costs in 40 years. Russia's doing okay. Their GDP is actually growing under sanctions, but it's actually crushing us right now. The world has experienced two economic shocks in quick succession the pandemic, and then the war in Ukraine, delivering the biggest commodity price shock since the 1970s. And now global patterns of trade, production, consumption of commodities have shifted in ways that will keep prices high for years to come. We can't rely on Russia. We really can't rely on China. We just flew to China to tell them to stop making so much stuff. The real war right now is being fought over commodities. As I mentioned earlier, this isn't flashy or TV friendly for CNN. No, the startling reality is that experts are calling this the super squeeze, the commodity super squeeze. As globalization crumbles, countries are gearing up for a different kind of conflict. It turns out, sorry, Bill Clinton, the idea of outsourcing everything to China, sending everything to Russia, sending everything to Mexico, and we have no manufacturing capacity, we have no commodities being produced inside the United States, that was a bad idea. So as globalization crumbles, countries are gearing up for a different kind of conflict, one that's fought with commodities instead of conventional weapons. The U.S. wants the land in Ukraine, not for its people. No, they want it for its resources. They're not concerned about Russia. It's all about the minerals that we don't have. Of course, the Clinton administration shut down uranium production, sold it off to Russia. Smart move. The Obama administration shut down coal production and so much more. No more new coal plants. Isn't that the destruction of a great American industry? I mean, people. And what we're saying is, in the same way that natural gas has replaced a lot of coal fired plants, well, let's see if we can get that same kind of progress on solar and wind. Biden shut down oil and natural gas production. Why would these countries want to send resources to the West? They're now keeping it for themselves, they know what's coming. This is a war over commodities like we've never seen before, and the mainstream media won't be covering it because this entire global war is all about resources.